Aloha. It's Wednesday, it's 11 o'clock. It's November the 17th, 2021. Welcome to What Now America. I'm Tim Apicelli, your host. Today, uh, today's title, if I can get it out, today's title is uh, Ex-Governor Christie Crossed Trump to Rescue the GOP. Uh, you know, in the time of Donald Trump's administration, we had very few Republicans who are willing to speak out against policies or things Donald Trump said or did, uh, fearing that the worst would happen, that uh, Donald Trump would retaliate against him. We had a couple brave souls in the name of um, Jeff Flake uh, from Arizona and Bob Corker from Tennessee, but that was about it. Uh, fast forward to today, uh, who speaks out against Trump, uh, particularly about the January 6th uh, insurrection and his involvement in that. We have Liz Cheney, Adam Kinzinger, and recently uh, Anthony Gonzalez. Uh, Kinzinger and uh, Gonzalez have decided not to run again because they probably did some polling and uh, Donald Trump's influence may still be very strong and very alive. Uh, but recently, as of yesterday, a book has been uh, put out by ex-governor of New Jersey, Chris Christie. The title of the book is Republican Rescue, Saving the Party from Truth Deniers, Conspiracy Theorists, and Dangerous Policies of Joe Biden. Uh, we're going to talk about that book, and I'd like to go to my guest right now. Uh, today we have Jay Fidel, Cynthia Lee Sinclair, and Winston Welch. Hey, it's good to see everyone here together again, and welcome back, everyone. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Tim. Yeah. Jay, to you, um, Chris Christie was at a, a recent GOP Jewish um, coalition conference in Las Vegas, and at this conference, he said the following. Uh, the party needs to plan for tomorrow, not a grievance about yesterday. Uh, a shot right across Donald Trump's bow about the election stolen from him. He also said winning campaigns is always about campaigns that look forward, not backward. So here we have Chris Christie coming to a book saying that the, the Republicans will not survive and certainly may not even take 2022 midterm elections if they follow Donald Trump and his grievance with the um, the 2020 election stolen from him, quote unquote. Um, when Donald Trump lost and, and, and Joe Biden became the new president, there was many of us and I was one of them and maybe you, Jay. I, we said that Donald Trump's, uh, his energy, his, his influence on the GOP was going to diminish and soon he would be relegated to a name that is seldom seen or heard from. Uh, are we still in that phase? Do we still believe that or, or has Donald Trump revived himself, and he is still very uh, influential and the party's standard bearer. We still believe it, but mm, it's a question of time. And it's a question of certainty also. I mean, remember that, um, yes, there are some defectors that are speaking and writing against him, but the base is still probably pretty constant. And the QAnon people are raising their heads more and more and, um, you know, the militia raising its heads more and more. At the same time, uh, Joe Biden is being pasted and uh, everything he does is treated as a mistake by a lot of the Republican legislators and public officials. And remember, too, that, um, you know, in the various Republican states, we have travesties going on all day long, which are going to affect, you know, the vote in 2022. However, uh, I think it, it, it's, it's still alive as far as I'm concerned, Tim. I think that Trump in some ways must be losing power because um, the QAnon crowd with which he freely and closely connects uh, is out of their minds. You've seen the footage of them waiting in Dallas at the grassy knoll, waiting for John F. Kennedy to drive by and he's gonna be the vice presidential candidate uh, for Trump. That is so absolutely out of, out of this world that it's hard to describe. And so, you know, to the extent that, A, that people have some rationality left, uh, they will probably reject that QAnon kind of thing. The other thing I want to mention is that uh, don't be sure of Christie. I mean, yes, he's defected. That's clear. He's invited Trump to punish him. Um, but, you know, credit, on a credibility scale, I give him a one out of ten. Remember what happened in New Jersey. Remember that maneuver he played with the with the tunnel to Manhattan, where he stopped the traffic for his own personal ridiculous reasons. That was really mean and uh, arrogant. And that's what he is. 
And right now, you know, I guess he's just saying to himself, uh, I'm, I'm going to desert the sinking ship. But he's also making some money with his book. You know, he's all over the, the networks with that book. Uh, so it's not, not clear to me what his exact motivation is. I think one thing- Well, let is, me interject something, if I could, uh, Jay. You know, uh, he's a former prosecutor. And it just seems to me that the Republican Party has lost its way as far as trying to follow the rule of law and preserve the principles of the Constitution of fair and free elections. And they've abandoned that. I mean, 74% of the, or 78% of the Republicans cited that Joe Biden was an illegitimate president as a result of the lead election. So doesn't Chris Christie represent a, a little bit of the old Republican Party that at least believes in the rule of law and is not trying to overthrow our democracy? No, belief is a hard word when you're talking about Chris Christie. Um, I think it's, it's pragmatism. Uh, he knows there are a lot of uh, voters out there who may be just Republican voters, maybe dis disenchanted. And he wants, um, you know, wants to try, try to bring them together. And he wants to be the guy in the, in the front of the parade. Uh, understandable. And maybe it's a uh, very practical, maybe even has the badge of possible success on it. And you mentioned Las Vegas. You know, what is in Las Vegas? A lot of money. That's that's what's in Las Vegas. He's there raising money. He's going to run for office. Um, so, um, you know, not to say that he should win office, but um, I, th I think he's got uh, a plan and it isn't all about uh, ideology or belief in the rule of law. OK, thank you, Jay. Winston, um, Chris Christie recently was interviewed in, yesterday well, by Nicole Wallace, and she really took him to task based on the fact that in his book, the, part, the, the second half of the title is Saving the Party from Truth Deniers and Conspiracy Theorists. Uh, she said, why didn't you take on Fox News? And he, um, you know, Chris Christie's pretty good at standing up to uh, media personalities. And he said, well, I didn't feel like writing it in my book. I, that wasn't my... Uh, that wasn't my thing. He said, I, in the book, he said, I did expose the, um, the fallacy of Pizzagate and QAnon groups and how the Republican Party has uh, shifted to uh, conspiracy theorists. But um, is that something we should believe that Chris Christie really does believe that uh, gone are the days where we can start believing in, in conspiracy theories and that should be abandoned if the Rep Republican Party wants to win in 2022? Your thoughts? Oh, it's, it's a complicated question, but uh, like Jay said, it's all about belief, isn't it? I, when Chris Christie is writing something, we have to remember he's a politician and he still may have, feel like he's got some, um, some room to run in this. And maybe he's envisioning himself as a cabinet member in the next administration or even a vice presidential candidate. He was running for president, we have to remember. And he is maybe positioning himself as a at least a thought leader, if nothing else, and realizes that maybe he can or can't get elected. But... He seems like actually, if, if, if we're looking at a field and you strip away his involvement with Donald Trump, then uh, he presents himself as a reasonably conservative candidate. But like Jay pointed out, he, he shut down the, the bridge into New York for, uh, I can't remember what the, the particular scandal was, but when as yes, yeah, so I, I mean, we're gonna, we're gonna be seeing a lot of more of these tell-alls and, and it's coming out slowly. Um, as far as, not adding in Fox News. It was an interesting one because we have to remember Fox News, you talked about, we've talked in the past about should the FCC come in? No, we don't have that in this country. We have freedom of speech. Um, what it should be properly labeled as is entertainment um, uh, or even a horror show because it's designed to scare and and provoke fear in the American public. And if you watch Fox News, and I do encourage all viewers to watch all of these, I would consider Fox to be mainstream media uh, because it's in on in half the countries in this in this uh, uh, half the TVs in this country. So we need to understand what it is. It is entertainment. It is it has a fiduciary responsibility not to tell the truth, not to give the news, but to make money for its shareholders. If it doesn't, it will be sued. So it's it's its goal is to have eyes in front of the TV that are buying soap or, or whatever they're selling. That's what Fox News is. But I think for a gentle viewer, um, we should remind uh, everyone that this TV that's in our house, uh, or the internet for that matter, or talk radio, 
what we're doing is we're inviting this into our mental, social, um, spiritual, psychological space. And when we're inviting in the anger and the rage and the chaos, that's what we're going to be spewing more of. And when that's all you're hearing, that's what you're going to get. I, I recommend that people cover their TV if they have one, that they turn it on very deliberately when they want to watch something, that they curate their news, stick to PBS and, uh, you know, nature shows or something like that. But Fox is, it's certainly the the, the mouthpiece of, of uh, so many um, people in America who are angry and it's giving them a voice. I, I don't, it's pointing them in the directions. I, I was appalled when I was, uh, last week when I was watching, I think it was Laura Ingram. And she says that the president hated America and that Democrats hate America. And I'm thinking about that. Here's this lady on the TV who uh, is, has a primetime channel saying that the president of the United States hates America or that the Democrats hate America. And I, I, I'm sure that's what I heard. And I was thinking, how, why would anybody, um, why are we watch? Why why are people watching this? Of course, the yeah. president doesn't hate America. The Democrats. Well, let me America. let me kind of address that point. Is is it is Chris Christie naive, or any politician that's to follow in his footsteps? Are they naive to to try to redirect the trajectory of the GOP away from conspiracy theories, away from the truth deniers? Are they naive without addressing? the messenger that is fox news and newsmax um don't they have to address those sources before the transformation of the gop can occur well i, I was chris christie featured on fox news when his book came out you know the messages do get through on fox um they they carry it's an interesting mix of, of what they've got on there but you know it's the same thing if you if you turn on msnbc you're going to get a lot of ranting and raving um on the other side now whether you believe it or, or not it's a lot of um uh same thing anger and, and fear and and uh and what what our president's trying to do what i've said is that joe biden needs to just pour baking soda on everything and unfortunately he's uh he's he's the tortoise in the race and uh we don't know if the tortoise will make it to the finish line because we want we're used to something every five minutes shiny object distracting our attention you know we saw liz cheney um get kicked out of the wyoming republican party was it yesterday or the day before and uh saying that she wasn't conservative enough when liz cheney was one of the most has one of the most conservative voting records in in congress so you know i think that that being carried chris christie's message being carried that you're going to see these cracks and dribs and drabs all over the place of people saying hey folks actually you know we've been under this spell we know you're angry let's give it a proper voice where we can channel it back into our legitimate institutions where we reasonably deal in good faith with the other party, which um, we should both be moving towards the center vision uh, rather than polarizing ourselves. I think that people will hopefully see through that. But the average Joe, I'm afraid, um, doesn't have the time or interest or ability to go deeper than what is being beamed in his or, or her living room. OK. Hey, Cynthia, um, Winston just made a very good point, and that is there are cracks. Now, we've been talking about cracks in the, uh, the Trump dam for a long time. And keep thinking that some of those cracks were gonna widen and the dam would break, but it never did. Uh, Chris Christie may be yet again, a new crack, but isn't it, do you agree with his statement that uh, it's best to channel their grievance uh, to take on policies versus conspiracies? And, um, you know, Joe Biden certainly can be taken to task for policies because that's what Republicans do to Democrats and that's what Democrats do to Republicans but it's gotten personal in the last five years. Uh, should should Chris, Chris Christie direct that grievance, direct that energy to take on the policies uh, of Joe Biden? Will that get them further than the path that they're currently on? Well, going after policies will definitely get them farther because the path they're on is pure propaganda and conspiracy theories. and. You know, I watched that interview with Nicole Wallace the other day with Chris Christie. And when she pressed him on the Fox News issue, she pressed him a little further and said, well, do you watch Fox News? And and well, he, he, 
without naming Tucker Carlson. He says, well, I don't listen to that guy, but we all know who he's talking about. And then he goes on to say that every night he watches sports, but he tunes into Laura Ingram and Sean Hannity as if somehow those two are not as full of propaganda as Tucker Carlson. They're, they're all three opinion shows. So he showed his hypocrisy there. He showed his hypocrisy in a number of ways throughout that um, interview. And I suggest everyone go find it and watch it because you really kind of see through him as she's pressing him on certain issues. He is using all of that political, you know, mumbo jumbo. I'm a, a prosecutor language to just bull right over the top of her and not answer any of the questions. So I don't trust Christy for his record. Remember, right after all the beaches were closed, he was and his family were the only ones out there. Uh, it was a bad visual. I do remember that. <laughs> that visual that will never leave my mind. You know, last week we talked about Fox News and and Rupert Murdoch and and how it is just a propaganda lie spewing machine that is a profit you know maker and i think that we need to expand a little bit in the way we look at fox news it's not just having effects here in america this is a world pro problem you know murdoch has his hands and fingers in a lot of pies and as we watch all these you know crazy dictators rising up and autocrats rising up all over the world right now. One of the ways that they're able to bind their power together is through these kinds of propaganda machines. So I think this is much more dangerous than the Republican Party is spewing lies. I think this is a very serious, dangerous problem that we need to do something about. And I think it has to go a little further than just the FCC. Well, that's interesting. Um... That takes me, well, before I go into the next topic, I do want to mention something. Donald Trump did respond to Chris Christie's uh, statements, and he said the following. He said, Chris Christie, who just made a speech at the Republican Jewish Coalition in Las Vegas, just massacred by his statements that Republicans have to move on from the past, meaning the 2020 election fraud. So Donald Trump has basically once again put his stamp that the number one platform for 2022 midterm elections is to um, reverse a 2020 election, I guess. Um, your comments, your thoughts about Donald Trump's inability to move on to the issues and policies that are facing 2022 versus his quote unquote stolen election of 2020. Well, I think that's all he's gonna run on because that's all he has. He has- Okay, a let me start you there, there. How can the, how can the Republican party follow that in lockstep and not say, unless Christie does it or, or Liz Cheney says it, that this is a wrong path to follow. How does that happen? Well, I don't think it does happen without Liz Cheney and, and Adam Kinzinger. And I think Adam Kinzinger, even though he has said he's not gonna run again, I think, and he, but he did in his statement say that he is not stopping his political ambitions. He's just not gonna run there again. So, you know, running the house. So I think he might be eyeing a, um, a spot maybe in the president's chair also. And I, I'll tell you right now, my Republican dream team is Liz Cheney as president and Adam Kinzinger as vice president. And I think I might even vote for him, depending on who's running as a Democrat. Because okay, we've heard it here. <laughs> <laughs> and I think they have credibility with a lot of Republicans, not the crazy QAnon ones and the Trumpers, but I think mainstream Republicans would turn out in droves for those two. All right. Switching gears, Jay, um, Ann Applebaum in The Atlantic wrote a, a, a really nice article called Autocracy is Winning, uh, if you will, a 30,000 foot view of how worldwide dictators, if you will, are kind of in the big cabal and they're 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 helping one another to defeat democracies and you know cynthia just mentioned that um it, they seem to be using media as its its main thrust how is how is this kind of concept any different than what we were dealing with back in the the 60s and 70s in the cold war 
A um, couple of thoughts. Uh, one is uh, before we leave the topic we've been discussing, uh, um, although there may be cracks in the armor of the Trump Republican Party, uh, if you look down the pike and you see them with the opportunity and continued opportunity of criticizing Biden, you know, to follow up on what Cynthia was saying, um, they, they don't have a policy. They just have criticism. And they'll use criticism against Biden, you know, as their policy tool. Uh, as a result, I think they stand a fairly good chance of taking Congress in 2022. And that will be terrible for all of us. It will be a pathway toward Trump. Um, and to say also that the country is divided. Uh, you know, Vladimir Putin must be doing the Kazatska. And, um, you know, and, and really, and, and, uh, and I think, to, you know, if it isn't, if it isn't him, I mean, I'm not, I'm not sure I assume it's him, but there's a fair chance it's him sending out emails as he did all through the Trump administration, through the Trump uh, election in 2016, um, to divide people. Um, it's, it's other mechanisms that divide people. It's the notion of Facebook, for example, and to some extent, Twitter, dividing the country. The country is so well and fully divided now. I don't, I don't know if a comeback on the Republican Party is going to save it. Okay, Then you go to Ann Applebaum. Ann Applebaum talked about the acolytes who made it possible for the communists to take over. This is in an article about a year ago. The communists to take over Eastern Europe after the war. And um, she, she spoke of a number of reasons why uh, the acolytes would, would um, migrate to, to the, um, the dictators. Um, and it was a very frightening discussion because the acolytes then and the acolytes that Trump had around him follow the same rules. So what do you get? You know, you get a country where um, a president who's a nutcase like Trump, you know, can uh, garner all these acolytes around him to do his bidding. You know, we've seen um, books and discussions recently about what happened in the last days of Trump and how he manipulated everything, including the military, uh, for his for his coup. I mean, it wasn't just at the Willard Hotel. It was this was going on from even before the election. Um, and so, you know, what you have is, is a would-be dictator with a country that is fertile ground for a would-be dictator. That's what you have. And you still have that. So the question is, what is happening in other countries? And Anne Applebaum, who is brilliant, I, I, I don't know if you guys saw her recently um, on MSNBC somewhere. <clears throat> She's brilliant beyond brilliant. And she knows the story. And it's not just a familiarity with uh, Eastern Europe. She's spent a lot of time in Eastern Europe. Her husband is Polish, as I remember. Um, and it's a matter of being familiar with, with global trends and issues and political science. And, and in this article that appeared last week in The Atlantic, which is the same, the same journal that, um, that the previous article appeared in, um, she tells you about the club. It's a club of propagandists. It's a club of dictators, all who like each other. And the, and the cold, chilling thing she points out is that when Trump was in office, um, you know, he was like sidling up to Putin, sidling up in his own way to Xi Jinping, even to, um, you know, uh, um, Kim in North Korea. Um, you know, the, the more of a dictator the guy was uh, in South America, Venezuela. Uh, the more of a dictator guy was, the more Trump was sidling up to him. So what is this? That's not America. Why would you do that? Well, the bottom line, which the press covered at the time, is he likes dictators. You know, the, he's in the club, or he wants to be in the club. At the same time, she points in the article to the fact that Trump was dumping on democracies. He was dumping on the EU and every democracy, every single democracy in the EU. So he said, what is going on here? Well, <clears throat> the club... It has one common denominator. It's dictatorship. It's controlling the, the population with propaganda. Um, it's staying in power for as long as you can for life, if possible. And the third thing is getting rich beyond your wildest imagination. And all that rings true. That's what Trump wants. And that's what we will have if he wins again that, or anyone like him wins again. To Cynthia's point, do these dictators have the influence if, if Fox was somehow regula regulated to verify disinformation before they report it or, or to eliminate disinformation before they report it. Do well, these dictators have a leg to stand on if, if they still have the media in which to spew their propaganda? 
It's part of her article. In fact, both articles that I mentioned is that if people criticize you, you get rid of them, you do away with them. Uh, and, you know, in the 21st century, this seems to be getting easier and easier. Uh, there was a really frightening article this morning, I think it was in the New York Times, about how people in China, celebrities, uh, movie actresses and the like, who have a substantial following and they're influencers to the public, because of that, are disappearing. You know, and what are you going to do about it? And so a um, newspaper editor, likewise, in a, in a dictatorship can disappear. Uh, he can have the rug pulled out from under him. Um, and I think that, you know, I don't think you can make the assumption that the press remains free in these places. Um, the, the press is under tremendous pressure and threat right now. And the next phase of this club we're talking about, call it the Ann Applebaum Club, is that the editors begin to get death threats. They are already getting death. We know that from what we're watching now, uh, and uh, they disappear. So do not assume that the level of uh, freedom of speech that we have now in this country will continue. Uh, it's not at all clear. Okay. Winston, um, the Aspen Institute of Commission of Information Disorder, so that's a mouthful uh, for an organization, they would argue that disinformation has less to do with the um, expanding technologies of social media and um, you know cable news and more to do with the deep-seated social issues that we've always wrestled with and have never resolved the issues of income and inequity uh, racism corruption uh, do they have a point is it because we seem to blame social media and fox news for all the things that we are now experiencing all the uh, dissension and and polarization of Amer of american um, citizens but does Aspen Institute have a, a point that we're not addressing the core issues that we've struggled with for so long? Without knowing that uh, the particular organization, I would say that it's not either or, it's both and. Uh, you know, people in this, in this nation, uh, you know, a number of decades ago, we sort of made a decision that we were going to have um, a divide and in and, and allow for a, a very super rich class. So there's there's a, this is an enormously wealthy country, but we also made that decision that we're essentially going to let people live on the streets, and we see that in in uh, you know many of our, our all of our major cities except the ones that have actually done some. I think Salt Lake City might be one exception there, and we we seem to sort of finally be grappling with this. But the fact that we have that is a shock to me um, in, this, in this rich era. Now, Facebook or, or Instagram or, or you know, uh, TikTok, whatever, whatever media that we're using or the traditional media of TV um, and talk radio, they certainly play a part in it. It's just like the idea of Donald Trump versus Trumpism. Many people support the, the concepts in Trumpism, whatever that means to them. Um, and that's just sort of a big stew of, of, of uh, discontent, I think, where they're voting for change. They're voting for something that they don't even know what they're voting for. Uh, they're angry. They want someone to blame. They have a savior who comes and says, I alone can fix this. Uh, vote for me. Now, it's just like I've said in the past, we may come back and, and, and uh, long for the days when we had someone as innocuous uh, as Donald Trump in office, where someone who's smart and diligent and really um, has his levers on on uh, the hands of maybe uh, someone who's even more photogenic or doesn't have such a checkered past could really come in here and do some damage. Hopefully, our president and our institutions are being fortified as we speak. I think uh, it's, 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 it's a hope of mine, but uh, you know, Joe Biden hasn't been taking the bait and saying, this is who's to blame, this is your problem. He's working on solutions. He is the slow steady. He's not um, you know, a, a glamorous president. He doesn't um, uh, make headlines, uh, except to say how, how terrible he is when I'm watching, you know, when I uh, turned on the media. Um, that's not a universally held opinion. I think people in this country are palpably relieved not to have the tension and stress and chaos 
thrown at them every hour, every tweet. And that's something that we can't underestimate. I noticed recently in a, in a few airports, they don't have any more TVs. And before, they always used to be filled with TVs. Now, they, they may be in, in many airports, but I've been in three that were uh, newish, and they had no TV blaring that noise. I think because people are so agitated already and they don't want them to get agitated and then go on a plane and, and have more shenanigans. Especially without alcohol. It's, well, or, or with alcohol, both of them. So I, I think that people, you know, when we're getting together now, probably a lot of people, even though we are in the middle of a pandemic, folks, and if you haven't been vaccinated, although I'm sure the intelligent viewers of Think Tech are triple vaccinated by now, um, a lot of people are coming together for the first time to see their families since the election, since um, Joe Biden took over. And they they don't want to go back there. They don't want to have the acrimony. They don't want to have Fox News on or MSNBC, for that matter. Leave it on. Leave it on. Leave it off. Talk about yeah. the dogs. Go for a walk. Remeet your neighbors. Give them a casserole. You know, at the end of the day, as I've said many times, what are we doing individually to promote, protect, and strengthen our own communities, our own democracy. When we don't like something, we write a respectful letter that says, this is how I'm feeling about this, Mr. Congressman, Mr. City Councilor, Mr. Mayor, um, uh, et cetera. Those are, what are we doing individually that makes the difference besides ranting and, and raving or, or stewing or, or worrying? And I think this show is part of the solution. Show other shows on think tech. There is a lot of hope in this merit uh, in this country. Uh, we have a great experiment. It continues to go. I have faith in people uh, and in this nation. And uh, you know, the alternative isn't pretty. So we all need to wake up and say, "Wow, that was like a crazy bad dream." What we experienced, and I kind of like a slow, steady Eddie here. All right, and, uh, and non chaos. <laughs> Okay, thank you. Hey, um, Cynthia, we got to go to closing comments. But before I do, I do have to recognize the fact that Winston has gone from golden toilets in West Virginia to casseroles. And I'm very happy to see that it'll cost a lot less to deliver casseroles. So Cynthia, we got again, we're over, we've gone over our time. But could you give me your last thoughts uh, for the show? Um, okay. I have a, I'll, I'll end with a really great quote from John F. Kennedy, but I just want to address one little thing we kind of missed in all of this great article that was written by um, Anne Applebaum and that she points out, you know, this is the reason behind why it's happening and why it's progressing so bad. The Belarusian dictator hijacked a Ryanair plane flying from Greece to Lithuania. The Russians have murdered people in the United Kingdom and Germany, and yet they paid no price. Our old diplomatic tools, sanctions, and human rights investigations now seem weak and ineffective. We are still reacting to each outrage as if it were a separate event. And until we start putting them all together, I don't think we're going to make any progress at all. And okay, good point. Great quote from John F. Kennedy. Go for it. All those crazy QAnon people that were out in Dallas this weekend looking for him. <clears throat> oh, and in they were in July. They were looking for him, too. But OK, so he says the great enemy of the truth is very often not the lie, deliberate, contrived and dishonest, but the myth, persistent, persuasive and unrealistic. Powerful. Thank you, Cynthia. I love that. Jay. Last thoughts on this topic or any topic? Well, so, uh, two thoughts. One is uh, I hope you guys remember it's been a long time. Uh, JFK was a Democrat. Yes, and you was. just see him as Vice President to Trump. Huh? Um, <laughs> the, the, other, the other thing I want to mention is that, you know, the article from Ann Applebaum, as uh, Cynthia has mentioned, is it's not just happening out there. We are involved. We are part of this global phenomenon. Uh, and Trump has already demonstrated he wants to be part of this, wants to be in the club. And maybe his Republican QAnon successor, if there is one, would want the same thing. So, you know, what's happening in this country, it's not only a, a coincidental parallel 
to what's happening in other countries with other autocrats. It's that certain elements in this country talk to them and they talk to us and they teach each other and they cooperate regardless, as she says, of ideology. Their ideology is to stay in power. Their ideology is to make money individually and screw the people. And we have to keep that in mind, not only in the larger sense, but in the smaller sense, in all senses, because that arguably is where the world is going. Sorry. Thank you, Jay. Winston, um, last comment, please. Oh, I, I, well, thanks for your show, Tim. Uh, I, I think that, um, you know, again, where it's uh, what Jay, Jay brought up some really um, important points and it's not to put our head in the sands it's to look at them to acknowledge them to address them and to look for solutions and i think the solutions are large and they're small so do what you can where you can when you can uh, as best as you can and continue um, educating yourself informing yourself but not to a toxic level move to solutions we all need to do it okay great well we've run out of time but before we leave i want to write the time and date of this show. And as a reminder that Cynthia Lee Sinclair is okay with Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. <laughs> we'll refer to this in the future, Cynthia. So with that, I'd like to say thank you one and all for joining us for What Now America. Join us next week, Wednesday at 11 o'clock. And I'm Tim Apicella, your host, and I hope to see you then. Aloha.